Time is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. And his one 100th homosexual partner, John Chesky, helps him out. Yeah, and I'm more than you. So I, that means I'm better. You just want to fight for who's gayer? Yeah, which is mostly what I'm about. If you really, if you really want to fight for who's gayer, we'd do it the traditional way, which is baby oil in a small tub. I'm not ruling that one out. We'd wrestle it. But before we do that, play the music! Yes, sir. The show that starts now. Oh, like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to, to me. Don't Let, you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Happy 2018, everybody. It's good to see you again. Is it the new year? Are we happy? Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a better year. Yeah. Like last year wasn't that bad. Calm down. Last year was a bit. Uh, you know, you're wrong. Right? Last year, last year was the best. You're right. Last year was the. I got nothing. There's a lot of bad stuff in the news, but l- we're all here. Yeah. Right. I'm not. Virus. You know what? Uh, you know what would make 2018 even better? Really good insurance from C3, C3 Risk, Risk, Risk and Insurance Services. Services, guys. Our friend Joe Earl. He provides insurance for everything. I think. I'm not sure. I know like cars and houses and businesses and stuff. So if you have one of those three things, he even as podcast insurance, if you listen to a podcast that wastes your time, time is money. You can get refunded. Yeah. Also, he insures us so that if for some reason this entire thing crashes down. I don't. We don't have a policy with Joe Earl. We don't have a podcast mm. studio fire policy. We should or f- studio flood policy. No, there's no. There, we don't have. We, we don't have. Can any someone policies. please buy us that policy? You'll get a twenty five dollar gift card to Amazon. Just do it right. Go now. to c three insurance dot com and uh, tell him that you love our ad reads. That oh, yeah. hopefully he's not listening to this one because this is one of the worst reads we have ever. That done. is right. And tell him Chesky sent you. He loves me. All right, but guys. it's balanced out by yeah. having a fantastic guest today. Hi, I'm Joe Dosh, everyone. And they, yeah, that that was a bad read. I, oh, I, I didn't horrible. believe. I didn't believe. <laughs> Everything about this opening, the intro, the before mm-hmm. the music, yeah. the music is good. You haven't heard the music. Maybe before. you should go That's back good. to purple shirts. I, I mean, know. I didn't even, I didn't even believe it was a real product. I mean, I thought like this was some kind of oh, you do they do fake live reads? Folks, we have yeah. Joe Dosh on the show because he's fucking honest, and that's what we desire here. Even oh yeah, if he says us, you know, he says stuff to us that we don't want to hear. That's well, okay. although to be fair, like Joe Earl is not making life easy on himself. I mean, I if he's got a middle name, I suggest you go by that. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't feel that confident going. I'm insured by Joe Earl. I think like he has a crowbar, doesn't it, Joe Earl? Yeah, I'm oh, fully man. confident. I'm yeah. fully confident. I'm going to support our, our our one and only loyal sponsor. That's right. I guess we had studio headphones for a while. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to support him and and fight back against our guest, Joe, Joe Dosh. Dosh. We yeah. always have to say it in we, we got oh, to say I like it. You just You jumped the gun. Great I'm job sorry. bringing it back. Thank you. That. That's Is what it, I do. I was sad for a I'm second. I'm a fucking professional. I don't know about that. <laughs> Arthur Thompson. Was born in Is September. Is that an insurance agent we we're advertising for yeah, now? Oh God, I'd love to be insured by Arthur Thompson. Arthur Thompson <laughs> Arthur, insurance. Arthur Thompson's the kind of name. I just I just feel safe. You know, feel like I got Arthur Thompson watching right? over me. Yeah. He sounds a super square black dude. Arthur Thompson, yeah. doesn't he? He's like he's black, but he's super modern and square. He has lots of sweater vests. He's a yeah sweater vested black yeah. dude. Arthur Thompson. Arthur I have, Thompson. I have one artifact from Uganda in my office. That's, but right. that's it. <laughs> I studied it, but Lord knows I'm not going camping there. <laughs> Arthur Thompson was born in September in 1931. Can't. They just call it living in Uganda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but not Arthur Arthur Thompson, no. Uh, the natives, I've studied them. In Glasgow, Scotland. All right. Mm. Did you know people from Glasgow are called Glaswegians? Glaswegians. Really? I believe it's something like that. Is that it, Glaswegians? Glaswegians or Ouija's. You can do either uh, one, but you don't Ouija's. do Glaswegians. You know, you're, you're, you're conflating them both. So they're like Kiwis, but on the other side of the world. Yes, oh, exactly. Okay. Arthur came from a good family. His father, Edward, was a steel worker laboring under hard conditions six days a week to provide for his wife and kids. Mm -hmm. They lived in the rough-and-tumble industrial neighborhood of Springburn. Young Arthur quickly learned the lay of the land, getting into daily fistfights at elementary school. What year? 1930s. All righty. It only took a couple of good beatings for him to learn that the best defense is to strike first. Hell yeah. By the age of 12, he added boots and clubs to his repertoire. Rich, you look like you could have played this bullied child. Like now, oh, easily. Now, I don't mean with like age regression when you were age appropriate. I mean now as a grown man, you could have played Are this. Are you proposing a film, Joe? You Are you could, saying I look you could, young? I, no, I'm saying you resemble a, a bullied fat Scottish toddler. <laughs> Go on. Oh, 
Oh, that's the best. I want that to say head bullied fat Scottish Tarzan in charge in front of his desk. Oh, it's so By great. the age of 12, he added boots and clubs to his repertoire. <laughs> they stole me did he chips. or did you? As well as a Malky Frazier, also known as a straight razor. Mm, a a Malky nice... Frazier? Oh, it's like Cockney. It's all that rhyme and shit. I thought, I thought it was like a stri- like a Scottish Streck arm trunk or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to be Malky Frazier. <laughs> it sounds like a good candy bar. Ooh, I'm hungry. Have anything? How about a Malky Frazier? As World War II spilled into the British Isles, mm-hmm. cities like Glasgow went dark to throw off enemy bombing runs. While it may have helped avoid destruction from above, the blackout also led to a massive rise in Burglary! Oh, crime. Burglary! Burglary! But is that, that is what it led to, right? Well, crime in general. I don't think the Nazis would have bothered to bomb Scotland. I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's next to England. Yeah. Why not? They have nothing. It's barely the first world. That's, you know, I almost take umbrage at that, but yeah. I've also lived in Scotland. I mean, so. it's, yeah, it's like, hey, like, we're going to go to Vegas. Do you want to take a, you know, a quick side trip to Indianapolis? Like, why would you bother? <laughs> Is Scotland that ghetto? Scotland's great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you've been. Glass- yeah, I used to live there. I went when I was a little kid. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's fa- it's fantastic. Now, Glasgow, what we're talking about is an industrial wasteland. Okay. But Edinburgh, that's a town. Okay. What'd you say, bro? Now we can't go to Glasgow because we will all get stabbed. Mm. That's right. Well, yeah, you guys ruined it. You burned our bridge to Scotland. There we did. Like many others, eight-year-old Arthur and his buddies used the cover of darkness to rob shops and factories. At eight? Yeah. What were you doing at eight? Not robbing things. Getting in trouble for, like, little things. Not robbing stuff. Scraping my knee falling off a skateboard or something. Yeah, that's why you're a comedian and not a successful criminal. (sighs) I wish you wouldn't have put success in that sentence. Mm -hmm. On the rare occasion where they were caught, the worst he could expect was a slap across the head and an escort home to tell his parents. Mm, Escorts. (laughs) As the (laughs) war... I just imagine like an eight-year-old, like, holding the hand of, like, a really tall, hot Scottish prostitute as they're walking home. And she's like... Oh, I just wanted to tell you. Your son rob something. <laughs> oh, you're giving me a hard on right now, dude. I know I am. That's sexy. What color dress are you wearing? Green. In this fantasy. Ah, green. Yeah, 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 the red hair. Brings out my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, she got red second, hair. For a second, I thought you said cream, and I'm like, no, no, no. That's not your color. <laughs> no, not no. on me. Are you oh, kidding heavens, me? Yeah. Slate on cream? So I'm just strawberries and cream walking around yeah. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Better than purple. <laughs> How dare Serving you, sir? Strawberries and cream realness. It's rich slate. That's my that's my drag name. Strawberries yeah. and cream. Strawberries and cream. Stra- tonight it's strawberries and cream and cherry poppins. Feature rich. Your strawberries and cream couture did not make a good dessert. I'm sorry, my dear. You're up for elimination. Oh no. That's what I wanted, though. But I'm the judge that's still just eating it. Go on. You will oh, eat it. God, you are Michelle Visage. That's what you are. As the Dude, war... is that a reference that I... These that... are all drag race references. Oh, fuck. Get, get on board. It's okay. the most fun. As the war raged on, the stresses of bombs gave way to the desperation of forti- shortages and rationing. Mm-hmm. People tried to find ways to supplement supplies, like starting neighborhood vegetable gardens from which Arthur could easily steal. Uh, I was robbing the eco-villages, you kinda, dick. kind of dork steals vegetables? A hungry one? In those days, Joe, you need a carrot? There's no carrots. Steal yeah. meat You'd like... start stealing them first. Steal meat like a man. That's a good point. <laughs> I can't argue with that one. Oh, I got picked by a chicken. Now I'm stealing a cucumber. What a little fruit. <laughs> but it wasn't enough, and the limited supplies quickly paid Was the Joe way. Was Joe one of the bullies? Yeah. <laughs> Joe's just, always one of the bullies. He survived 100 years, and Joe's here right now. You were the bully back then. This man is a criminal. Are we to... Yeah, not yet. Well, not, actually, well, I guess right now, he's just a, a, a kid right now, we all love. Yeah, right now, he's just he's a, a kid. He's a cute little He's just a starving child. Who carries a straight a razor and yeah. occasionally yeah. stabs people with a it. A Mulkey Francis or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, that's the best. You know what? I actually... Millennium Let's Falcon. go with the Monkey Francis. There's your drag name, Monkey Francis. Francis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at you, it's Milky Francis. Milky doesn't sound good at all. Yeah, Milky <laughs> Francis. Oh. If, oh, God, I don't even want to say Look, it. I'm pale like a proper royal person who wears purple and stays inside. Yeah, go on you with are. your story. Stay inside the story. But it wasn't enough, and the limited supplies quickly paved the way for black market goods from organized crime. By now, Arthur had already spent years running errands for shady locals, dropping off bets at the bookie, or picking up booze for tough guys. The black market trade provided more opportunity to earn and to learn. By the end of the war, he was 14 years old, standing a muscular 5 foot 10, giant by Jesus. the malnourished standards of war-torn Scotland. Yeah, Jeez. giant now, 5'10 and muscular? I, That's like me, but, you know, muscular. I, I take back all the slamming about stealing the vegetables. He's thinking 12 steps ahead. Mm-hmm. He's just, he's just he's a lot of on, that, he's on that early diet. You, yeah. get, you get good, you steal good nutrients so you can commit better crimes. Right? He's a later. vegan thief. 
He took a job working as a bouncer alongside his brother Robert at a few local pubs. Bar fights were a nightly occurrence, popping off over the smallest perceived slights. The job mainly consisted of throwing the combatants into the street and giving them a second beatdown as punishment for breaking the rules. <laughs> so he's like the bouncer of the parking lot. Like the yeah. stage one bouncer throws you to the second bouncer like you've already left. It's just It was also common practice for bosses to pay their heavies to frequent their competitors and regularly start bar fights driving customers to look for less dangerous surroundings. That's hilarious. It's great marketing. Mm -hmm. He eventually began to target small pubs on his own, warning them of com that coming trouble could be avoided for a fee. You need our protection. Okay. So he's like a... Scotty. He's running his a mini protection racket inside a protection racket. Oh, okay. That's meta. Yeah, you got a grift, man. Mm -hmm. Eventually, this went south when in 1953... He strong-armed the wrong man and earned 18 months in jail for extortion. Oh, was boy. the wrong man a cop? No, just a bartender, a barkeep, a bar owner who was like, eh, fuck off. Basically, yeah, that's you're it. You're not going to get away with this. I'm going to follow through and get you busted. Yeah. If someone says, eh, fuck off in Scotland, you have to go to jail. And eh, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Please, sir. Still, the job had its perks, serving as a makeshift audition for his first real criminal job as an equalizer for loan sharks. While most collectors were required to work for only one moneylender so as not to split loyalty... He was so good at the job that his bosses happily shared their best heavy. He quickly built a reputation as the rising young star of the criminal underworld. Oh, wow. He's the enforcing guy. Like, everyone knows. Like this. He's, guy the, kind of... he's the Tony Hinchcliffe of yeah. the fastest young rising comedian today. Yeah. We reference him way too much on this show. Do yeah. we? Oh, yeah. I haven't noticed it. Seriously? <laughs> That's like probably our eighth Tony Hinchcliffe reference. Oh, well, you're show. saying it now, yeah. You don't, you don't sound like you know a lot about what's going on at this podcast here. Yeah, or the world, really. I feel, like, I feel like your persona is like, gee, shucks, what's going on, everybody? And I just, I mean, I've been here for ten minutes. And, it's and just, you understand it, everything. And it's, just, in. and it's just not cute. It's not attractive. Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true criminal story about lawbreakers to my friend <laughs> Joe Dosh. Who am I? Hi, What's going on here? Yeah. You're like you are. You're like a Midwestern housewife watching What's a movie. Podcast? Who's that guy? I'm gonna make some popcorn. <laughs> Before long, oh, that sounds so good right now too. Arthur had jobs with two of the best criminal enterprises in the entire city. Caramel corn. He worked as the main enforcer for a legitimate businessman. Not even paying attention, you're just talking about popcorn to yourself. <laughs> who also ran brothels and a loan business on the side. Making sure payments came on time and continuing with the fallout from the sex trade like angry husbands, boyfriends, and former pimps. When he wasn't breaking kneecaps, Arthur worked as the newest member of Glasgow's number one bank robbing crew. But the young man was already thinking ahead of his counterparts. While the rest of his cohorts spent half their money on booze and stored the rest in their floorboards, Arthur slowly invested in small businesses. Mm. He wanted, they wanted comfort. He wanted an empire. Ooh. He wanted to feel that that pimp feel. That's what's up, dog. Running everything. Ugh. Take him to the top, love. Oh, the Scottish impression. Just a little bit, like... A little bit. If you put it in, like... Fine. Mm. That, could be, the, that could be Irish. No, Irish is more like this, son. Yeah. Not unless you're an what Irish you guy be, that talks like this. What do you think an Irish accent, an Irish accent sounds like? Irish sounds like that. What is a Scottish a little more guttural, like... Mm -hmm. It's more absolutely a different, different accent from top back. to bottom. Scottish is like like an Irish person speaking like as if they have a ventriloquist dummy all the time. You know, it's like, oh, you got to speak from the belly all the time. You look like a ventriloquist dummy with too much lacquer. <laughs> have you been on a roast too, battle before? You're too, really roasting the shit out of us He's too shiny. Here. It's taken away from the jokes. <laughs> By the 1950s, Arthur was well on his way. It's a really sadistic episode, huh? He and his new wife moved to the newly developed neighborhood of Proven Mill in East Glasgow. City planners designed the area with plenty of new housing, but mm -hmm. forgot to make room for things like shops, public transport, and police stations. So there's sounds just like houses. A, sounds just, like L.A. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like a lot of places. Did sounds they forget a water source? Because it would be just like L.A. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it quickly became Arthur's territory. Because the police weren't around. Because there was nothing around. Hmm. So he could just rob things and there would be nowhere to, Well, right? this Well, this is still like the four, This is like the 50s, so you can basically, if like you're a cop and it's like, oh, I kill hobos on the trains. Like, oh, great, you're doing a great job for society. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we were going to go kill the hobos ourselves, but our, our, we're just waiting for the pensions to come in. <laughs> they're, they're riding around on trains. That's what they used to do, you know. They would just kill hobos for taking free train rides, which, yeah. is, like, which is like shooting people in the mouth for taking your Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same. Because the hobos, is. I, no, but but the Wi-Fi is a big deal. Like, you lower the bandwidth. How can I get, like, your porn starts freezing? Aren't all hobos murderers and rapists anyways? Every hobo. Right? Yeah. There's like a none, of them are, none of them are whimsical. With the risk of sounding naive, like, there's a pretty big population of hobos that are pretty much like they're just murderers, I think, right? Mm -hmm. I read a Vice article once. 
Yeah, I'm serious. No. Yeah, and, and the only thing we know about on this show is that Vice is always right. Oh God, that's not true. They're the best. I can tell you. Aren't, aren't, aren't all, all Vice authors just rapists and murderers? Jesus <laughs> I've Christ! Read, I've read about that as well. I heard about that. I don't know. They're reporting on some serious things. Let mm. them have a murder every now and then, right? Soon, Arthur made two <laughs> important alliances. Patty Meehan. Mm. Patty pa- Meehan pa- over here. Patty Meehan was a serious And Pamela man. Henderson. <laughs> Together. It's a three-way, boys. Rich, I don't think you need a partner. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Thank you. I mean, uh, did you bring him on here to fire me? That, Fuck you! <laughs> oh man, I guess I guess the cat's out of the bag. Here's Joseph, fe- Doctor Mingle, Adash. Here's, how what, dare here's you. Here's what I feel happened here. I feel like you just wanted to get away from your wife, Rich, and you could only. <laughs> The only pretext you could find is I'm going to start a podcast, but just doing it alone, like, she wouldn't let you happen. So I'm like, well, hey, I can't let John Shevsky down. And now you're just... just... I got a wife, too, buddy. Get me out of here. Uh, Can okay. I come with you? Okay, now it's all become so no, clear. Let me just say, it's really an honor doing the swap cast. Uh, Joe Dosh psychoanalyzes two people. And that by the way, and for the record, I'm just an asshole with no relationships. I'm just why I'm here with you today. That's right. Continue, Rich. <laughs> with, yeah, being that honest, you're not going to get very far he's in a relationship. T- he's even telling me to go on with a story. Yeah. He's doing all of your job he's really for you this week. Great. He's really doing great. He got the coffee he's really he's on it this yeah. guy's he's a big thing patty Meehan was a you serious man with an acid tongue but he also happened to be glasgow's best peter man oh it's a peter man can't find the peter man a safe cracker oh okay. a really weird a, a slightly homoerotic term mm-hmm. for a safe cracker mm-hmm. he'd learned the skill in prison from the former number one who was only inside because he was between one of his five escapes mm-hmm. ever the businessman Arthur put his ego aside to put together the strongest team possible. Yes, question in the back. Oh, nothing. I was just looking at I was looking at the camera and waving at it. Oh, yeah, so the yeah. camera that we don't use. Is that use. real? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we know we don't we don't stream this shit. There's a red light on it though. Somewhere. I don't I don't want my, I don't want this shiny this, We're going this, to play this a shiny game. pale face out on the internet for everyone to see. <laughs> a podcast game. Read the story. Or your friend white, will white balance the camera against Rich Slayton's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's not impossible to, let's be, hold let's up be a fair. piece of paper no, and Nate, take it away. Nate, Nate hurts the white balance. He comes okay. in here. He says, By the way, I really away. like that movie he's in with Will Smith where he plays the orc. <laughs> High and inside, but still a good pitch. <laughs> While most of Glasgow's hard men distrusted gangsters from other neighborhoods, Arthur saw opportunity, making alliance with Teddy Martin, the top man just across the river, known for his quick temper. Teddy Martin. Arthur, Patty, and Teddy were a criminal dream team. Oh, cute names. Poised mm-hmm. to take over the town. Until Teddy landed himself a stay in Scotland's most secure prison, Peterhead. <laughs> That's the name? Yes. Peterhead? Yeah, I don't know why they're so obsessed with the word Peter in Scotland. I think Just it's a, a Freudian a thing. a pale, really ruddy penis with like a super purple head because it's so cold? Yeah. Peterhead. Yeah. Just standing straight tall? That's what I, I mean, that's, that's what I go for. With an institutionalized font underneath it that shows that it's a jail? <laughs> Peterhead. Welcome but as Peterhead. luck would have it, at that moment, Peterhead also happened to hold Patty's former mentor in between escapes, and more than happy to arrange one more. A few months later, Teddy scaled the walls and dropped to the other side in perfect time for Patty in the waiting getaway car. Working off an anonymous tip, the cops raided a Glasgow apartment to find nothing but prison attire with Teddy's ID number. He'd gotten loose and just left his old shit? As the cops searched the apartment, Arthur Thompson made his second phone call of the night. To the apartment? This time to a hotel just a few miles from the prison where Teddy waited patiently. Mm -hmm. The uniform was a fake, acquired from one of the many guards and officers on Arthur's payroll. Forward thinking... Was he throwing them off the scent with, like, for dog sniffing? Mm Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Forward thinking he'd made it a habit to keep records of law enforcement officers who frequented his brothels, saving the favors for just such an occasion. Oh, man. Eventually, Teddy and Patty were caught and jailed, but not Arthur. He's too smart for that shit. He's a he's a he's a thinker. Mm-hmm. He's a thinker. He has four degrees. He's a thinker, and he has power because he knows all these people, so he can. That's get what's stuff. up, dude. He's got dirt on the cops. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know the the real smart ones. They can be criminals right under your noses, and you'll never know it. That's such a good crime rule. If you're if you're gonna commit crimes, make sure you have dirt on people with power that aren't criminals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. How are those webcams in your house doing, by the way, and the Alexa that I bought you? <laughs> They're fine, right? You're enjoying them? I wouldn't give a fuck if you have... I'm, I'm into amateur porn. In 1954, what? Patty was out after 18 months, and it was time for Arthur to put his best asset to use. Mm. The target was the bank of a small town in the country, known for its wealthy residents. The commercial bank was undergoing renovations, temporarily operating out of the community center. It was the perfect opportunity. It took only five minutes to break in and reach the safe. Except, instead of one safe... There were two? They found five. 
Oh, so there was a ton of skrill, as we used to say in those Weird, days. Weird, but no problem for Scotland's number one Peter man. <laughs> Paddy cracked the first safe and found only a few pounds and some papers. Scotland's number one Peterman. Same with the second. The third was completely empty. Then inside the fourth safe, they found another Bitcoin. safe. Oh. They found a safe within a safe. Wow. Which also held nothing. Uh, In the end, they walked with only 400 pounds, the equivalent of around $14,000. That's still pretty mm. fucking dope. Yeah, Obviously, it's... it would have been nice if it was a million bucks. Yeah. Patty complained endlessly on the ride back to Glasgow. You hear how sad Joe sounded about the 14000 yeah. well, I thought that uh, would have been a whimsical no, moment no, no, for that's, you. That's a yeah. Good, yeah, it's you know, it's a fine score. It's just not enough for that many <laughs> safes. Yeah, it's a, lot, it's, a lot, it's a lot of safes for very little it's a, it's money. A, yeah, it's a far walk for a little glass of water. It's like when you give someone a gift and it's a, like you just do a box inside of a box mm-hmm. and then inside of a box. And they think there's going to be like tickets to see Bruce Springsteen in it, but you're like, no, that was the joke. Yeah. The boxes. Yeah, that's, the gift was the laughter we just had. And Joe would be like, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen is is who you like you dream of getting. Guy, you really are an old Midwestern lady. <laughs> I, what? I want to see the boss before he's wanna, too old. I want to go see the boss and sway around with the other dentists from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag this is culture. I deserve that one, folks. This is a song about a part of Jersey I wouldn't be caught dead in. <laughs> Under the boardwalk, I instruct my driver to lock the doors when oh we drive God, by the boardwalk. Oh my God, play walk. that one again. It's yeah. my favorite. Baby, I was born to run. Oh no, wait, that baby, one's my favorite. Man, all these Springsteen songs are my fucking favorites. I grew up in West Hollywood. <laughs> did he really? No. Yeah, he no, he did. didn't. Yes, he did. And then he moved to New Jersey? He did. He's, his father is like a cinematographer out This here. guy's my fucking hero. Doesn't that make you hungry, really? cinematographer? Mmm, muffins. Patty complained endlessly on the ride back to Glasgow. When they stopped to get gas, the attendant didn't like the look of the men in expensive suits and scarred faces. I don't like the look of these men with their scarred faces and their expensive suits. God, it's like obvious science theater 3000. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's the best one ever. That's a combo of where we think the show is and what the show looks like to the outer world. <laughs> <laughs> Literal we might have to here. change our name again. <laughs> Obvious Science Theater 3000. Rack, I don't think this we movie's have, very good. <laughs> we might have to change it. <laughs> he called the cops to give a description <laughs> and, and the license plate. He's just. He's cruel, but very just. <sighs> the next day, they pulled in Arthur for questioning. Oh, did the next day did they pull in Arthur for questioning? <laughs> oh, whoa. It's like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Kahn acting school over here. Very cool. <laughs> fuck you and fuck you. Oh, God. Can you explain these? An officer said, dangling a set of keys. Mm. Arthur replied, they're devices for opening doors. But Arthur knew Fucking that they were nailed his. Nailed them. <laughs> he lost them during the robbery. That mistake earned him six, earned him three years and Patty another six. Ugh. You lose your keys. The number of times like robberies get busted up by dumb shit like that. It's it's the paperwork. Yeah, you fucking you left something, bro. It's the yeah. paperwork. You left something laying around. Mm-hmm. That drives me crazy. I always lose my keys, but never in a robbery. When he got out, Arthur decided to leave behind the amateurs and ply his trade in London. So he did his three years. He did his three years. Yeah. Nothing significant happened there. You want to tell us about? Nothing really. No. Okay. Okay. As an unrecognizable face, he traveled to the big city for odd jobs, returning home each time to maintain some of his anonymity. He mostly worked as a bagman, secretly transporting illicit money across town to avoid the usual inter-gang robberies. Is he still affiliated with these gangs that he was, like, the champion of and everyone knew his name back in the day? He's still running. He's still, like, a big man in Glasgow, but now he's taking small jobs in London, both to uh, make some get, get away from all the bullshit in Glasgow. But to branch out and find and some new bra- avenues exactly. for revenues. Exactly. Yes. It may not seem glamorous, but his perfect success rate and professional demeanor caught the attention of London's criminal elite. Soon, just as he planned... His reputation was too great to simply be a courier. It's like you want you want scouts in that industry. You want an right. agent to catch you in the crime world. Yeah. To draw, to be like, we're going to bring you up to the next level. You got. We've got a robbery coming. Who books that? <laughs> That's a stand-up comedy reference for our audience members. High and inside. For years, he carefully worked his way up, making sure to mine his criminal P's and Q's. Until he got offered a big job and called in his old friends... Patty and Teddy. Patty and Teddy. Sounds like Babar's kids or whatever, <laughs> friends. Patty, Teddy, and Arthur. A bunch of little animals that play together. Their, their, yeah. their names seem very Irish for being Scottish. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Patty. Babar, Babar was the old elephant that was like basically an apologist for colonialism, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you cynical, serious, That's intellectual what he was. piece I don't, of shit. I don't know what there is to apologize Joe's for. Joe's too smart for us. <laughs> Bringing civilization to all these untouched worlds. Tonight we're, Joe's tonight, too smart for us. He's tonight, like, <laughs> tonight we're going to read Babar uh, trample some Kenyans didn't he, for the benefit of the crown. Didn't he represent aristocracy? I'm like, he was an elephant with a shirt on. Joe's too smart for us. <laughs> Ficht. Ficht. Uh, where <laughs> was I? Lost where I fucking was. Oh, fuck. I, about I told you, you put your fucking thumb on the paragraph you're reading so you can go back to it faster. You know what's funny is I definitely did, and I just and forgot that's why my thumb was there. <laughs> you piece of shit. Can't be that obvious. Folks, the dumb meter is off the charts today. They got together at a pub to plan and pool resources. When it came time to put in the necessary cash, Arthur pulled out a rare 100 pound note. A big no no when you're trying to stay under the radar. Teddy Martin lost his shit. Yeah, you don't don't pull out your roll, man. Yeah, that's, you never count your money when you're sitting yeah, at the table. That's like in The Sopranos where Furio comes in the door and they just see the, the two, you know, Matthew Bevelock, who has their whole world, give me $1,000. These two suck each other's dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed that episode and I'm really sad about it. I oh, think that was a porno parody Joe was watching, but he can't tell the difference now. It's been uh, so long. Ah, yeah, hush. <laughs> the Sopran holes. <laughs> 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 it's big in the gay community. I've been doing my research once a week. Teddy, Teddy insisted. Okay, where the fuck was Teddy Martin lost his? Follow shit. your thumb, young lad. Follow your thumb. Teddy Martin lost his shit, causing such a scene that they had to head back to Petty's to Patty's flat, where Teddy continued to rant and rave. So Arthur pulled out his Beretta and shot him. What? There's a murder that just happened that fast. This he is- went. Hold on. He went home while Patty drove their friend to the hospital. Mm. But the wound was minor, and the next day. Teddy insisted they go through with the job without Arthur. After being wounded by a gunshot, he was able to work the job? Yeah. This is a gunshot. Where did he get shot at? I, you know, I didn't say. I think it might hit him in the shoulder. Okay. So, yeah, not a big deal, man. No. Let me, look. <laughs> look next, week, next, week, next week, I'll shoot you in the shoulder on Wednesday, and then we'll just do the. We'll I feel like Joe's going to pull like a, one of those little Saturday Night Specials out of his boot right now and shoot one of us in the shoulder. <laughs> a Derringer. I see you with a Derringer. <laughs> I pulled a Derringer out of, my, I pulled it out of my guard belt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I keep it there with a gentleman get I, to a rough house. I was thinking if you had like, like a belt buckle derringer. They have those. I could see you having one of Joe those. Joe pulls yeah. out a pistol and someone's like, is that a snub nose? No, it's a snark nose. All right, guys, I'm out of here. That yeah, was fun. Got, <laughs> nice talking to you. Can't wait. Joe can't, had no problem holding laughter from that. Can't wait to edit that <laughs> to one out, watch of, this, you out of this episode. <laughs> oh, you're not editing that. The people deserve to know what's going on behind the scenes. The emperor wears no clothes, has no riffs. <laughs> The job <laughs> failed. I'm, you know what? I drank too. Fu- I drank. I you drank too much caffeine. Too much coffee. Today. That's happening. That happens. That could be the name of another podcast we could do. Too, too much, much coffee caffeine or too much coffee. Yeah. Just the job and failed miserably. Teddy was caught by an office worker who somehow heard the dynamite used to blow the safe. Patty escaped, but was picked up eight days later, attempting another robbery and jailed for eight years. By now, some people are beginning to wonder how Arthur always managed to escape jail while his colleagues got pinched. Teddy Martin made the mistake of asking that question. While it officially remains unsolved, everyone in town knew who ordered his murder on March 25th, 1962. So Teddy's out now. He's a dead guy. Hmm. Congrats, everybody. By now, one of the London outfits was unhappy with his recent encroachment. The Cray twins were dangerous and connected, not the kind of people to cross. So Arthur did the only thing that made sense. He went to their favorite club, the Double R, and told a waiter he wanted to see the twins. Stands for rest and relaxation. They came to the front and asked dismissively if they could help him. Aye, you can, he replied, as he pulled out a sawed-off shotgun and pointed it at one, then the other. (laughs) You can kiss his arse. The twins briefly reached for their guns before realizing he wouldn't hesitate to fire. One twin dropped to his knees behind the other, and when the deed was done, Arthur backed out the door. Wait, so he did shoot him? No, no. He made, the, he made one twin kiss the other twin on the ass. Oh, he was being literal. Yes. Oh, that's a hilarious style of robbery. Oh, I'd... he went on just pounded cum out of himself after that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's something about the power of getting a man a toss oh, another yeah. man's salad at the front well, of a He's not robbing them. He's well, they... just humiliating them. Well, they're twins. They're probably close. Anyway. Oh, that's I mean, They've probably already Well, fucked. I mean, they were probably, what, like four months in the womb. They just had, like, each other's faces buried. <laughs> they were 69ing. They were yeah. a yin-yang twin. Yeah, exactly. How else do you fit in a womb? Oh, my it's God. It's just not economical. Well, I mean, the other thing about it, too, is how else. Like, how else does one mother feed two babies unless the babies are blowing each other? <laughs> like, and it's, human it's, centipeding in the womb. Yeah. Oh, my it's God. It's like human centipede meets Soylent Green, kind of, oh, inside the womb. sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Rich's Mom. Arthur backed out the door. 
My name is Arthur Thompson from Glasgow. You'll never forget me. Wait a minute. Do you, do you mean your, your mother's listening to this podcast? Mine does. Zane does. You guys got to call them or something. This shouldn't be the way that they keep in contact with you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> if enemies in London weren't enough, things were starting to get hot at home, courtesy of his neighbors in his second territory of Black Hill. The Welsh family was huge, ugly, and known for their lack of hygiene. I already love these people. <laughs> Welcome home, Welches. They were hated partially due to their habit of stealing other people's clothes from drying lines and mugging grandparents. <laughs> and they had bad breath? Jesus Christ. You know, I could forgive you hitting my grandma over the head yeah. with a pipe, but then you breathed on her. Oh, and now yes. she hasn't had something to eat oh, in two God. weeks. It's just ugly, smelly people who steal, <laughs> who steal. Your clothes. They steal your clothes See, off the clothes Joe, line. Joe, these are like, wouldn't you want the cops to just kill them if they were on a train? Like, oh, just kill God, them anyways. What a, what a bunch of nuisances. Oh, God, just it's fungus. Like it's like, just human God, fungus. It sounds like everyone who snuck into the Comedy Store Christmas party. <laughs> uh, geniuses, they were not. One day, they got the bright idea to run their own protection schemes on Arthur's pubs. When Arthur and his crew showed up at their home with normal sweet weapons like knives and hatchets, the Welsh family stuck guns out the window and opened fire. Three men were wounded, including Thompson. It was time for war. Thompson got fucking shot up by a drive-by in Scotland in the 60s? Not a drive-by. Thompson and his crew went to the, the Welsh. The, first of all, this is one giant dirt family. That lives in one giant tenement. Just a stinky, no one washes their ass family. They're just they're just a group of garbage people. Probably inbred. Hopefully, hopefully. Everyone in the UK is kind of inbred. I mean, that's that a, islands. The island that's isn't a that big enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's a gross generalization. Well, it's a giant island. I think it's, it's a hot generalization. They've just been personal. fucking on each other for a thousand years. I think you're explaining some of the problems in my family. All the Brexit people right are like, now. oh, we don't want to bring any immigrants in. It's like, God, you, you don't we don't want to dilute the blood you only, pool. You only have so many genes, you guys. I mean. Don't bring, don't bring in the Polish. Our eyes might start getting closer together. Get some fucking capital letters in your All little right. genetic well, Let me just say things. now. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> when, yeah, sorry, Ben. Uh, when our, yeah, so, so, yeah, so here's what happened. The, the, the Welsh, they try to do protection on Arthur's pubs. Yeah. And so Arthur grabs his crew with a bunch of knives and hatchets and normal, like, fun street fight stuff. Mm -hmm. And they go to the Welsh's house where they all, where, like, eight generations all live together. Yeah, the stinky to hut, fight, we call it. And the Welsh just open their windows and start blasting out of it. And Arthur gets hit. Oh, the Welsh just suck. <laughs> oh, they really... And it's not the Welsh. It's not like the people from Wales. No, no, no. Yeah, you're they, not making a racial statement no, right now. No, you're no, You're just saying... You're saying this family whose last name is the Welsh's. Yes. Like, like Welsh's jelly. Do they have anything to do with the jelly company? Uh, yes. I want to throw this water bottle at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I've done my job. If I just piss off one Joe Dosh a day, then I know I've done my fucking job. Money lenders usually try to avoid violence towards their debtors, since it makes them less likely to be able to pay. <laughs> But the war changed everything. Not only did Arthur need to solidify his scary reputation, but he needed money to fund the fight. So he began to send a message by crucifying his defaulters. <laughs> like physically nailing them to nailing. something? Crucified. One man who owned an auto shop found himself nailed to the front garage door. Can I just tell you, I'm scared Jesus. to ask questions right Jesus now because Joe, Christ. I'm very self conscious of asking questions. So I'm like, don't say it, but I'm seriously no, say, curious. Say it. What the fuck? Like, they, he nailed people through their hands, like Jesus style, and fucking. It's. I mean, maybe through their wrists, who knows? But he did nail people to shit. Wow. Yeah. This is. I'm beautiful, just, right? Disgusting. Amazing. Effervescent. Good God. What other, what other inappropriate adjectives can I use right now? Well, did they crucify them upside down like they did with all the saints because they didn't want to be as – they realized they weren't as good as Jesus? I think they – Was that the reason they did that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's why they used to crucify people upside down. And you're going to get a head rush. Yeah, because like, hey, I'm not Jesus. He got crucified this way. I better get crucified upside down. Can you just crucify me backwards What I'm trying point? to say is if they willingly let themselves be crucified right side up, then they, they kind of deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> These heathens. <laughs> yeah. Joe, you're creepily just. <laughs> but this was just the warm-up act. Mm. Arthur once took a meeting with a London gangster to discuss a job. At the end of the night, he took the drunk and happy man outside to catch a cab. Instead, the man found a severe beating and stabbing from Arthur's heavies, followed by a trip, uh, a trip in a van to the Knightsbridge, currently under construction, where the men tied concrete blocks to his feet and threw him, still alive, into a deep pit of wet concrete. Whoa! Wow. 
which was actually kind of normal there, apparently. Like, a lot of people. If you go to that, that bridge is filled with concreted bodies. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Ugh. They, like, you can't see them because there's concrete. It's in the concrete, you know that there's people. No, no, no. They use clear concrete, so you can totally Shut see the them all. Shut the fuck up. You can buy acrylic stuff like that nowadays, but go on, asshole. Arthur regularly paid construction crews, so he always knew where to find the fresh disposal sites. Jesus Christ. Seeing. This guy's brutal. How great an economy can it be if it's like, oh, yeah, I will tip you off about the concrete pits you can throw human yeah. beings into them. Nowadays, you just look it up on the Internet and just have a special website. You don't people. Oh, don't yeah. Another, another industry ruined by technology. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, so this guy took a mob boss from a, like a rival gang out, got wow. drunk with him, and then had him killed. I don't know if he was a boss, but he was a guy. And so the the guy, this this particular guy, had insulted, had done some sort of slight or insult towards one of Arthur's friends in London. And that guy was like, "Hey, Arthur, do me a favor and kill this guy in the gruesome way that you can." We well, didn't tell him how to do it. Arthur's creative; he's an artist, and he's taking the game to the next level. How, can you imagine how weird it'd be to, to tell someone to tell a friend, like, "Hey, by the way, this guy pissed me off, knowing your friend's probably going to murder them, going to end their existence." Well, we said murder him; he just didn't say how. That's Arthur what I'm saying. How, how weird of a lifestyle is that that you would tell your friend, like, "Hey, this guy," like, if I told you so and so annoyed me, and I knew like, you were going to end their existence, it's a fucking trippy thing to do. That's all I'm saying. It sounds pretty normal to me. Okay, well, you've been reading this podcast too long. Go on with your story. While Arthur was conducting war, crucifying shop owners, and burying people alive, he received word that the Cray twins wanted a meeting. The Cray twins? Yeah, the ones that he may kiss each other's ass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Word was they had a job that required his expertise. It was a risk, but he decided it was worth it. As luck would have it, his little stunt had actually won the Cray's respect. Wow. He spent the next few months roughing up some local competition that they couldn't have pinned on themselves. A few months later, they had to call another meeting to ask him to be gentler with his targets. By 1966, Arthur was one of the most respected and feared criminals in the entire United Kingdom. He had a nice home, dozens of legitimate businesses, a wife, and two kids. Wow. Oh, yeah. He kept up a square front. Of course. He's a, he's a, he's a real boss. Not one of these losers. I know. How have I never heard of this guy before? He sounds like a terrifying mob boss. That because actually... he's it's Scotland. There's like five million people in that country. It's not like it's not like we get a bunch of Scottish television and music here, other than like Bell and Sebastian or whatever. That's true. Yeah, we're the we're the exporters of culture. That's what our job is. I didn't know that. But that could not last. He was driving through Glasgow when he felt a thump and his car nearly ran off the road. He looked up to see the laugh, laughing faces of Patrick Welsh and a friend in his van. Furious, he rammed them back. As they reached for a shotgun, he hit them once more, forcing the van into a light post. Welsh and his friend were killed instantly. Oh. I mean, we don't like them. These are the dirt people. Well, yeah, but I don't know. I kind of feel, but they didn't crucify anybody. They just smelled bad. Well, that's kind of a Dude, form of crucifixion. Honestly, nasal yeah, there, sensory. There are certain times when you're like, oh my God, man, just yeah. take a mint or nail me to a cross. Because yes. they weren't like, you know, they weren't like a, the Romans that, you know, nailed Jesus up. They were just like a stinky apostle. You I could, guess. <laughs> you, you could argue that their, their smell was so offensive to each and individual cells inside your nose that received that. That they were torturing those things. <laughs> and You're you crucifying some, my you nose. Somehow rash- <laughs> Look, you could somehow rationalize like that is a that's torture. I contend that if they had just put these people in front of Jesus instead of crucifying him, he never would have come back. So so yeah. uh, Arthur was driving his van down the road, and they and ran into one of them, or they, they ran into him, like physically, or in another with vehicle their, with their in a van. Okay, I didn't understand they started from, him. Okay, yeah. okay, so they ran into they they bumped into him. They bumped into him like on a, purpose. Like Jaws, like the shark bumps into mm-hmm. you, going, and you're like, what the fuck was that? So he's driving, and he's like, like what the fuck? And they're yeah. ramming into him. Yep. Then they like both stop and like stare at each other down. Like no, they're like still they're driving. It's, it's one of those like pa ha ha pa ha ha. Oh fuck you! Crash dead. Mm. He ro- ran him into something. Like yeah. he knew he's gonna like and here you go. And then he swings the wheel and they have like to. Like I said, in. he plans. Yeah. By 1966. Oh yeah, one of the most respected. Blah blah blah. Could not last. Oh, we already did this whole entire part. Since everyone knew Grandpa, about the Grandpa, are you okay? No, I'm not. Did I'm... I ever tell you about the time? Yes, you did. <laughs> and, a, and a little bit of us dies inside every time you repeat it. <laughs> Since everyone knew about the feud, Arthur was charged with murder. But the Welsh family didn't want to wait. Three months later, Arthur, out on bail... We'll put a stinky hit on him! ...got into his car and began to drive. Then the car exploded. Arthur's car exploded? Mm-hmm. Wow. Remarkably, He's... he survived but the same cannot be said for his mother-in-law in in the passenger seat. (laughs) Jeez, Louise. Sounds like a really old your your mother-in-law joke, huh? Yeah. (laughs) 
Take my mother-in-law. <laughs> it's a Scottish mother-in-law joke. Yeah. I was driving around with my mother-in-law. It exploded and she yeah. died. To the delight of all. It's, it's a good German mother-in-law joke. <laughs> That's the part. reflected on the futility she of life. <laughs> <laughs> ha 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 <laughs> which that's a german applause break by the way mm -hmm. weeks later arthur appeared in court on a subpoena to testify against three members of the welsh family for the bombing but he was a true gangster and said nothing the three welshes walked free as soon as he finished so his even testimony, though he fucking hated those guys and they were his enemies he yeah. just you don't you, you don't, don't by the talk. rules you yeah. don't yeah you don't handle shit with the, with the cops no. obviously the three Welshes walked free. As soon as he finished his testimony, he walked across the hall to attend his own trial for double homicide. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> That's, that just works. Sometimes it works. Eco-friendly criminals, right? Where the jury took less than an hour to find him not guilty. Oh, all right. It may have helped that no witnesses came forward. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to be crucified. Or made to smell the Welshes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes in life you gotta slow down and uh, smell the Welshes. Oh God, please don't. Okay. For the for the love of God, I have kids. Please. It'll make you appreciative of oh the good smells. Oh my God, please. The public showed mixed feelings about the trials. On one hand, it appeared that the re the recent rescinding of the death penalty had made the gangsters more dangerous. On the other hand, they were only killing each other. To regular people, the matter was finished, but not to the people involved, especially Rita Thompson. Rita Thompson. Arthur's wife had always stayed out of the business, but it was her mother who died at the hands of the Welsh family. Now she's involved and pissed. So she grabbed two knives and a few friends and set out for blackmail. They broke down the door of the Welsh home and started a horrific brawl. This is just the wife. This and is her the friends? wife and some friends. Yeah, his wife and like, and his meow. his brother is with is with her too. Oh, okay, I'm just imagining like one chick with two knives. Like you live in a mansion. Like just go back to living in the mansion. Rita found herself face to face with Patrick Welsh's widow. You smell awful. When the cops finally arrived, blood was everywhere. Rita having stabbed Ma Welsh repeatedly. Ooh. Somehow this is, this is like if Carmela just cut the head off of Angie Bompensero when she's like. <laughs> Giving out sausages at the Costco in season two. <laughs> this is deep, deep. Uh, uh, Guys, uh, I know that you're deep into the podcast. Go back and watch all the Sopranos and then come back and start this in the beginning. Have you watched it recently? Because I haven't watched I mean, it for like 10 years. I loved it when I was No, ahead. Joe's mind is a steel trap. Yeah, you really can remember that much of it. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I love that show and I can't remember any of this stuff. Somehow. I just remember that. What's his name? His uh, girlfriend's, uh, his sister in law with the big hoop earrings. It was super hot. Oh, Adriana. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I Somehow. Just... Christopher, you sat on my dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he must have crawled into there for warmth or something. Oh, Somehow, Wells survived and Rita got three years in prison. Later that year, Arthur was approached by MI5, the British security service, and offered a deal. They would leave him alone in Scotland if he gave them info on the London gangs. Oh, this guy should be the new James Bond. Oh, he's fuck the best. It, Fuck Idris Elba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get 90-year-old <laughs> Arthur on, on this. <laughs> doom, 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 with his watch mm -hmm. on, trying to do things. <laughs> he told them to shove it, but he didn't Shit. warn any of associates. Two years later, that proved to be a good move. While in jail awaiting trial on a robbery charge, he was called into the Warren's, war warden's office where he again met the same agents. So he's still just going in and out of jail for stupid crimes when it's like he's already rich and running shit. Yeah, he's getting in for a little small things. So he's got kids, too. Like, what the fuck's going on? Who's yeah. taking care of these kids? He's got a wife. And she a was in jail for stabbing the other chick. Oh, yeah. Who was taking care of the kids, you right? You fucking asshole. Yeah, right like I was a dick. Yeah. It's a good question, right? I don't know. Probably so, probably someone with, like, one eye or two I, legs I, I or whatever. I feel like the kids are fine. Uh, this doesn't They're going to end up being criminals, Joe. This doesn't really sound like a helicopter parent culture. Like, I think... <laughs> They might be all right on their own. You think so? Okay. Okay. They uh, get the, the agents again made their offer, but this time the carrot also included a stick. They had a pile of evidence that he'd been supplying arms to help the Protestants in their fight against the Irish Republican oh, Army. fuck. Funding wars, dude? Mm. Jesus. If, this guy's a piece of shice. If he said no, they'd charge him with terrorism and accidentally make the report public. He'd probably be assassinated within a year. Mm. Wow. Arthur agreed, going to jail for a short sentence, but avoiding any real trouble. Wait, wait, he was selling arms to the Protestants in Northern Ireland? Yeah. Okay. He spent that time mulling something the officers had said. The deal allowed him to continue his protection rackets, gun running, and various other schemes. But an offhanded comment from the officers gave him a new idea. You can even do a bit of drug dealing if you want, as long as it's small scale. What the fuck? 
they're really negotiating with this guy. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's no, it seems fair. Like you go like it's one thing I learned from watching The Apprentice mm-hmm. is when you go into a negotiation, yeah. make sure you have something to offer. That's yeah. true. And that's how Trump's going to solve North Korea. I'm telling you, they need one of those Alzheimer's towns for these criminals that has like got a bank and it's got all the stuff and they get to go rob the bank and they can run their racket, but it doesn't infer- interfere with the rest of us. It rem- I was it's reading, called Australia. I was reading recently <laughs> about like cops in Chicago, how they don't even bother to like throw like mob bosses or like high level gang members in jail because like the like the lack of stability that happens when they do it is just causes way more trouble. It's more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, like killing Saddam. And yeah, like, it, precisely. Hey, precisely. Wow. Yeah. Destabilizing it. Wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever. That's crazy. We got to get our troops out of Chirac. What would you. <laughs> okay. You are just. You're on it. Arthur was released after just two years for good behavior. It was the 1970s, and drugs were small time in the UK, but not for long. <clears throat> Within months, Arthur had Glasgow gripped in a heroin epidemic. He was money, making money hand over fist with the blessing of MI5. And he's pretty much the leader of a giant heroin epidemic? Yeah. The fucking country is compromised to heroin because the government made deals with this one fucking Specifically dude. Scotland. Like his, his heroin, there were people who fucked up heroin into, into London, but like he, Glasgow like crumbled under heroin, and it's pretty much all him. That's insane how that, like, much of the world can be affected. That's a, it's like I was reading like this whole thing like Obama was – like Hezbollah, like a lot of their – Hezbollah, I think so much of their money came from coke dealing, like selling to the U.S. And Obama like kind of pulled off and enforcing it because he didn't – like they were when, they were negotiating with Iran and trying to get them to calm down on their nuclear deal. Because so, Obama hates Israel. That's what I'm we trying, all know. That's what I'm trying to say. Joe was <laughs> being serious and you turned it into one of your little bits. I don't piece have. I work mm-hmm. – by the late 70s, he and Rita had four kids and three vacation homes. Oh, wow. So things are working out fine. He's rich. At They're AF. great. Dude, this is, I think this is going to be a happy story. He sold out his whole fucking country and gotten a bunch of ki- kids and people's lives ruined for his drugs. Go his on with your oldest, story. His he oldest, has a marble countertop, though, and fast cars, so we must worship him. Fuck you! His oldest boy, Arthur Jr., wanted to be like dad. Despite the fact, the way, is he can, still alive? You, you, hear this? you can't see this if you're listening to it. But every time Shevsky says something like that, he looks at me and it's kind of like, "Hey, that was kind of all right, right?" And I'm, then I'm just, so scared Joe's going to be like, "I'm going to fucking get you for this next." Uh-huh. Time. Like, Did that one pass the Joe test? That's why. That's I keep why I've been be holding scolded. off on my riffs because I'm just I, I don't want to. <laughs> don't be. I don't Joe, want Joe, Joe to change the, the way you're doing your comedy. He, he like I I'm came just waiting in, to be scolded after I do my riffs. This is what I Rich am. scared. Rich, Joe, you scared him. I didn't say. He has a gag report. I've gotten paler and fatter since I came in here. He has a gag order. It's all. You haven't Dosh. gotten paler. <laughs> Is this what I am to people? <laughs> no, you're you're helping keeping us in line. We need oh. discipline. <laughs> His Joe, oldest... Joe, we need discipline. Like that's why you're here. They hired oh, you. You're the dog whisperer for us. His <laughs> oldest boy, Arthur Jr., wanted to be like Dad, despite the fact that he was decidedly not. Aww. Nicknamed Fat Boy for <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> If you make what a you, comment about how I can play this kid, I didn't I am say going a to word. I wasn't you. going to wor- going to say a word. Slate, you're not fat. You're fucking sexy and plump. Thank you. I know. You're like you're a cooked only, wiener. You're only sort of plump he's by like ridiculous cooked, LA he's like standards. You're a cooked hot dog. That's all. You're Thank a, you. You're Thank a fucking you. Wisconsin nine and a half. Thank you. <laughs> I've been planning to move there for a long time. <laughs> I can't wait! I can't wait to be the number one actor in Wisconsin. You got a good kind of fat too. It sits on your body like in a, a healthy way. So just be proud of that but, and be happy. Before we before we turn the mics on, Mr. Slayton described himself as black t-shirt fat, which, yeah. is, which is a very very evocative phrase. <laughs> it's really fucking accurate. Too. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm getting there, man. Here, here, fucking... Here's the thing about being the kind of fat that I am is because I like I'm I'm not fat fat. I'm just like not in shape. And so whenever someone sees me, they're like, hey, dude, you look like you've lost weight. And I'm like, oh, you just thought I was fatter is really what it comes down to. Your mental image of me yeah. is a fatter person. I never thought you were fat. I was Thanks, thought you man. Were, you had a nice, like a bulky, like brute build. You need a little bit more muscle, but you, you've got a good body. As a, as a painter, as a painter, you've got a good look. Fat boy lacked the fighting skills of his dad. Which may he made up for by paying his own teenage heavies to do the work for like him. A pink sea lion or something like that. <laughs> he made right up. Here. He made up for in trophies from marmalade eating <laughs> contests. <laughs> when he didn't get his way, Fat Boy was quick to say, "Do you know who my dad is?" Because I just ate him for lunch. At home, he took unloaded guns from his father's armory and pointed them at his family members, oh, insisting they pretend to die God. when he said bang. This guy's like a fat Max Landis. I don't like him. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I have a feeling, though, that uh, he could have written a better version of Bright. That's my that's my go-to. Yeah. I liked that movie. That cops and magic shit. 
Arthur. Wait, is that the new movie with Will Smith? Is yeah. Right? Was it good? It's a movie. Arthur Senior seemingly here's is the alienation. Here's, a, here's the thing. Someone it's made not, it. It's not, you know, it's certainly not brilliant. It is a B movie, but like the reason everyone hates, I mean, aside from Max Landis acute being accused of whatever he was doing, like the reason people don't like it is because it's a quote woke nerd movie, and the most resentful people in the world in LA are what? Woke nerds. Sure. So that's really why. Yeah. Also, there's orcs wearing jerseys and gold chains. <laughs> it's so. not exactly. It's not, there, there are lines in it where like there's this one part where they like they lose, they're chasing some orc kid and he like jumps up on a fire escape and these guys are like no 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 orcs don't have that kind of ups they're just short and squat and powerful that's why in the nfl they're all linebackers in science <laughs> like there's a serious? lot of that kind of yeah. shit yeah is that like on the nose like yeah. racial <laughs> yeah oh and will smith started in it yeah wow i mean will smith is in it yeah and he is the star technically i don't know if you would say he started in it. i would say that he was there and they filmed and he talked i didn't hate it by any means did you ever see alien say. nation it was an old tv show where aliens and, and humans were cops together it was great go on with your story arthur senior seemingly encouraged his son's behavior taking him on business trips from the age of 14, followed by night by nights at clubs and brothels. Oh, yeah, dude. At 14? You're going to ruin a kid you take him to clubs and brothels. Why? What's the problem? Mm-hmm. He's going to have too much of a good thing right away. I had a buffet when I was like 11, and it ruined me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, it ruined me. While Dad wasn't one to fool around too much, Junior once bragged, quote, I've had more blowjobs up Edinburgh Closes than I've had Mars Bars. Oh, God, I wish I could say the <laughs> this same. This kid rules. This kid's awesome. Uh, Slayton's cons- obviously had more Mars bars. Go on with your story, fat bar. Oh, no, no, I have had more blowjobs than I've had Mars bars. I'll tell you that right now. I've had very few Mars bars. <laughs> uh, it was a considerable feat since, uh, since Fat Boy was known to eat several Mars bars in one sitting. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> in the early 80s, the Thompsons received a knock on the door from a young man much more suited to be heir to the throne. Paul Ferris asked to speak to the boss. When Arthur came to the door, Paul explained that his sister had spoken to the cops about a drunk driving death caused by Arthur's cousin, but that she wouldn't be doing it again because these things were best handled without the law. Hmm. Arthur was impressed, but he didn't know yet that Paul was a likely Robin to his Batman. Since the age of eight, Paul had been a regular target of bullying at the hands of the Welsh family. By his teen years, they had taken to hitting him with hammers. As some sort of strange defense mechanism, he'd taken to laughing while they crushed his bones. Wow. As a young man, he'd taken to stabbing Welsh's whenever the opportunity arose. Oh, my God. It's like the gangs of Scotland. That's literally what it is. <laughs> that's what, that's, yeah, that's my job. Yeah, mystery, that's my, obvious that's, that's theater, that's obvious job. thousand. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One night, he came across a Welsh, and the brief struggle ended with him smoking a cigarette while he watched the victim silently scream as he touched to the bloody place where his scalp used to be. Mm. The Thompsons took notice and quickly recruited him to the team. <laughs> we, we need that kind of uh, passion on our team for sure. Look, here, here at this outfit, we're looking for two things, ambition and a guy who will take scalps. And I see something in you, son. That's balls. That's balls right there. Take a scalp. And so Paul started working for Arthur Thompson in the same role the godfather of Glasgow had in his own youth. Paul was an efficient enforcer and collector. But there was one small problem. What was that? Fat boy. Mm. I mean, not a small problem, really. Yeah, I was going to say, more of a buttery buttery problem. Actually, rather rather large. (laughs) Two airplane seats. Junior had been the one to officially recruit Paul, and he viewed the enforcer as his own personal crime valet. He loved to make Paul recount every bloody detail of his jobs, followed by making him drive around town while Fat Boy shot at road signs through the window. Oh, that's kind of fun, actually. That game, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, but you grew up in a Dakota. Yeah, exactly. I don't well, remember you which actually one, done but... that, Joe? Oh, yeah, we used to drive around oh, and shoot man. road signs all the time. Like with a revolver, or like, what did you have? Yep. Re- oh. um, well, I had a revolver. I only ever had a twenty two, but I had friends who had like an AR-15 and like revolvers. Just driving and, we... and shooting? Oh, yeah, we would just go out to, they had a little lake cabin on this lake no one lived at, and oh. then we would just go, they just had an arsenal, and we would just shoot. We would shoot, um, what we would do, there'd be little streams running around it full of carp, Yeah. we would walk the stream <laughs> and, just sh- and just shoot carp all day, and then just throw the fish on the side and then we would take the carp at the end of the day and there are these like you know how the the, the Amish they're called the Pennsylvania Dutch yeah sure there are there are these tribes called the Hutterites and they're basically like German Amish people and yeah. they live in the Dakotas in Minnesota and we would take the uh, the carp that we shot and trade it to them for whiskey oh wow mm-hmm. so they still ate it they just oh pulled, yeah they pulled the bullets out and yeah that's great. I, I feel like you were like one or two weird instances away from being one of the people in this story yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> this is just rec- this is just Dakota recreation, man. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that sounds like a great time, and I, I was afraid that you're gonna say that you guys waste like you just shot the carp and then drove away. Oh, we like, would do that too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, that bums me out. Well, carp are, gar- carp are garbage fish. They're not. You know. They're they're racist. Carp. They smell bad. <laughs> yeah, they're racist. Yeah, yeah, they. They yeah. sexually harass. They they make all sorts of vicious anti-Israel statements. Shoot a Nazi fish. Yeah. <laughs> shoot a Nazi. Shoot a Nazi. <laughs> That's right. Instead of punching Nazi, shoot a Nazi fish. Hashtag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That game ended one night when Fat Boy decided to do his shooting out the sunroof, and got stuck. Oh yeah, by the titty or the belly? <laughs> by the belly. By the belly. He, wait, I'm imagining like between the titties and the belly, oh. so it's just digging. He can't in. go up or down. It's just nothing, di- yeah, it's just digging into that one exposed rib between all the blubber. Uh, there's nothing more dangerous than a frustrated, fat, spoiled brat with a gun that's stuck in something. Dude, too. can even, you imagine that? Like, oh yeah. Like oh god, just oh. asking him, like, him, him screaming at you to get him out and mm-hmm. being afraid he's gonna shoot at you and mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah, exactly. And plus, like. Even, God, well, even, the be- the best even an old sunroof, you'd have to be fat as shit to get stuck in a sunroof. That's right. Those are big. They're like vi- vinyl or like canvas. You like mm-hmm. have to pull them back. Jesus. So Christ. the best part is that they, the guy, the, the drivers were like, since Fat Boy didn't know his way around mm-hmm. very well, they just drove around for like an extra half hour because mm-hmm. they were like, you know what, fuck this guy. Instead of taking like, they were like, oh no, the turn is right up here, and they kept on doing that <laughs> for like, like half an hour, stuck in the door to Rabbit's house. So, and then when they, they paint a smiley face on his ass, this and then kid put sounds Moose worse than his it. dad. I, I really yeah. don't like this guy. Oh yeah, no, the the boss's son is always worse yeah. than the boss. He's AJ Soprano. This is exactly the Sopranos. Oh, dear God. Oh so, yeah, he was a chunky. So monkey. then he, they get back, and when they get him out, he was wedged in so hard that he broke the motor for the for the uh, the sunroof. The motor. Oh, I thought you meant to the car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was that. Fat. Yeah. Yeah, he broke the, his, I just can't this, imagine, this I, vehicle isn't equipped to trail a horse trailer. I, I imagine like Ralphie May in a Model T, just like, yeah. oh, fuck, he broke the motor. Like, <laughs> bless up, Ralphie. That would have that would have been Ralphie May in his silent film career in the 1920s. <laughs> ah, the Model T fell apart. He would have been hilarious in that. Holy fuck. But Ralphie Fat Boy's T. antics would catch up with him. In 1985, someone tipped a clean cop off to his heroin dealing. Normally, there would be no hard evidence. Mm-hmm. But this time, someone planted with a grudge planted smack in Junior's car. Fat Boy was convicted and sentenced to 11 years. Ooh. While Fat Boy was going in, Paul Ferris was on his way out, having served 18 months for a small heroin offense. But much like Fat Boy, Paul knew he'd been set up. But there was one problem. The only two people with enough information to do it were Arthur Thompson and his overweight son. Mm. When Arthur asked Paul to plant a bomb on a car of a clean cop, he decided to leave the family for good. As it turned out, Paul this was This is after right. he got out of jail. After he got out, yeah. Okay. As it turned out, Paul was right. The cop job was a setup requested by MI5. To try to catch, to get Paul back in mm-hmm. the jail? Mm. They just, he just got out of jail. They're like, let's get him back. So it's entrapment, basically. Yep. Okay. Arthur's empire was sinking, and he was making any desperate move to keep it afloat. Basically doing whatever MI5 told him to do. Now mm-hmm. all of a sudden he's a tool for, for them. Yep. That happens. That 1985 happened. saw the next attempt on Arthur's life. While in his backyard, he heard a pop and felt a tug at his pant leg. <laughs> he turned around to find a furious man with a gun. It wasn't one of the Welsh's, IRA, or any organized crime. It was the angry husband of a woman who borrowed 75 pounds from the Godfather and made her first interest payment with her mouth. Are Arth- we talking about a blowjob? No, no, she just talked to him for a while yeah. in company. She was, she was like, can you read me a story? Pay a woman she to re- talk more? <laughs> she recited a lovely poem. <laughs> Arthur grabbed the gun and beat the shit out of the man. That was beautiful. Yeah. Your debts are absolved. If you read you it, go like, to the library, you get some Robert Burns, <laughs> and you don't come back until you do. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur or you can suck on me, Peterhead. <laughs> That's right. Whichever one's good to you, like. If you want, you can read me a story, or you can suck on my knob. Either one is fine by me. That'd be crazy if you thought they were equal. Like, if you... I enjoy equally a blowjob and a short story. Where the fuck am I? I am gone today. Earth 2018. That's not true. I'm not here right now. Arthur grabbed the gun and beat the shit out of the man before having him taken away and disposed of. The shot barely grazed his leg. Not long after, a real hitman called this, The Apprentice... This guy's got really good luck. He almost got blown up in a car and yeah. shot... Like, this is crazy. That's how... There that's, is no God. Go on. The apprentice took another shot at the godfather, but the wet gunpowder threw off the first aim. The second time aiming for his chest, he hit Arthur in the groin. 
<laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. The, the shooter ran off, and Arthur was able to drive himself to the hospital I love the time. word groin, by yeah. the way. I'd like it to come back. Oy, gro- it, it is back. I never left. Yeah, groin? I, played, I pulled my groin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you hear that all the time. Do you? Yeah, you get, just go to the Y. Everyone's pulling their groin over there. Are they? Playing some weekend oh. basketball. Shut up, Slayton, you little bitch. If you want to hear about Just groins, go to the Y. Yeah. You sound old AF. To the Y. Right? You're the old guy. I'm young. Go I on. I couldn't tell you where a YMCA is in Los Angeles with a gun to my head. You know, in other cities, the YMCA is like a nice gym that you go to. Mm. Here, it's a fucking wasteland. Yeah, it's a bathhouse. Yeah. It's, it's a song. Uh, uh, no, it's not. No, a bathhouse would be an upgrade. Yeah, like if you if you were just slipping on cum, the YMCA in Los Angeles would be a really nice Zing, place. That comes the new uh, banana slips. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Three. Years. What you just described is basically a twenty four hour fitness in West Hollywood, though. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds terrific. The shooter ran game. off, and Arthur was able to drive himself to the hospital in time to prevent any lasting damage. Three years later, two men ran him over with a car three times, and it didn't even hurt him. Then they got out and shot their own car and planted their gun next to what they thought was a dead body. But Arthur had just been faking. Like a bear attack. He used the same logic that you do when you get attacked by a bear. Isn't that what you do when you get by a car? You play dead so the mm-hmm. car backs off. Unless you're really tall, then you stand and you go, ah, to the car. No, you do that with mountain lions. You don't, a bear won't give a fuck about it. A bear doesn't care? Yeah, mountain, lion, you get, mountain lions are scared if you make themselves... A bear will just eat you. Yeah. Basically, the whole plan with a bear is you just kind of lie down helplessly and just hope it decides not to eat you. Oh, my God. That's your plan. I saw that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. Terrifying. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Yeah, I haven't seen it. Arthur felt lucky to be alive. Not seeing it was a sign that the good times were coming to an end. Arthur and Rita's oldest daughter, Margaret, had a boyfriend, a junkie called Cyclops. This rich fucking mobster's daughter's boyfriend was a junkie called Cyclops? Yep. He's lost fucking control of his family. They tried everything to break the, the couple up. The man who had control of his family, <laughs> but not of his family. <laughs> Again, no. Sopranos. I see what you're doing. Yeah. But nothing worked. The couple was in heroin love, and she died of an overdose in 1989. Ugh, Arthur, what's going on, man? Arthur made sure that everyone knew she died of drinking too much and choking on her vomit, which was much more acceptable than heroin. <laughs> oh, so, uh, yeah. That's just, that's just the Scottish flu. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking and choking on your vomit. That's Scottish old age uh, death. <laughs> How'd he die? Oh, natural cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she died comfortably in her own sleep, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> died comfortably wink, wink. in her own vomit. Wink, wink. Cyclops, like many before him, fled town to avoid Arthur's wrath. So he took it out on anyone else he could find. When a former employee got out of prison, Arthur decided that he was the one who set up Fat Boy and had him taken to a house in the countryside where he was nailed to the floor. Oh, my God. What's wrong? That's fucking disgusting. That's a lot of nailing in this Yeah, this story. is so gross. And not even the good kind. <laughs> That's oh. true. Although the Fat Boy got some blowjobs. But Pro- no, oh, seriously. he did. Seriously, though. And you weren't very descriptive on those. I'm very disappointed, by the way. But uh, no, nailing people is cruel and unusual. On August 17th, 1991. It's rude. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Boy was granted his Concise. first <laughs> Very right. You're, rude is the right word. Fat Boy was granted his first weekend leave for good behavior. That sounds delicious. Instead of spending the time getting laid, he went to a pub to celebrate with <laughs> did his you friends. Just do Fat Bane. I, like guess. I, don't, just, <laughs> I don't know what I did. I need chocolate for energy. <laughs> I still haven't seen that Batman, by the uh, way. I to. still it haven't stinks. seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the worst. It's even worse than the nipple bat suit one. Uh, but people wear the Bane costumes for Halloween, you know, a couple years yeah, ago. They're and bad. I, I was still left out. There at the pub, Fat Boy pulled out several pieces of paper and proceeded to treat his large audience to a reading of his hit list. Words spread to the people on it, including Paul Ferris. What a fucking dumb, fat idiot. Ugh. That night, Fat Boy left his home to make the walk to see his dad. Waiting in the shadows was The Apprentice. You'd better get your father to get you out of this, you fat bastard, he said. <laughs> Read that one again in yeah, an was, accent. Yeah, you, that was kind of, hey, you, you get your damn hands off of her. Yeah. You, better get, you better get your father to get you out of this, you fat bastard. Oh, take I, a deep breath. I love it. I felt it. I would say take a deep breath and try it again. Give it some beats, some pacing. Okay, Rich, that was great. Okay. Could you try to read it mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. better? On, you better get your father to get you out of this, you fat bastard. You better get your father to fuck you. Go on your story. Just you wait here, fat boy replied. I'm going to get my father. <laughs> 
Is he in jail? Wait. No, no, he's out on leave. He's oh, out on God. weekend leave. Because apparently that's a fucking this, thing. This, this guy is like a mean Jigglypuff. <laughs> <laughs> the first bullet hit Fat Boy in the cheek. As he fell, <laughs> it was which hard one, to miss. One of the 17 on his body. <laughs> Chin number seven's taking <laughs> hits, sir. <laughs> dive, dive, dive. <laughs> he hits the. We're taking on water. It's like Kevlar. When you shoot this guy's cheeks, it twists the bullet in the same direction it's spinning and it stops it from entering. As he fell, the apprentice put another in his back. But he wasn't dead yet. So the hitman aimed and took his third shot. Directly up Fat Boy's asshole. Are you serious? Oh, he come put the on. gun to his bunghole? He very specifically aimed it at his asshole. Wow. Did he pull his wow. pants down to like find it? I mean, I he had probably got forceps in there and called it a crane to hold up both you sides. Shithead. No, you, you, you know. The bullet traveled straight up his sphinx sphincter and into come his heart. Come on. Are you into his heart? He shot his heart oh. through his asshole. He literally Away shot... Away to a man's heart. Which, yeah, that's... He shot him in the heart with a bullet coated in his own feces. Oh, yeah. Even if you survive, you're going to have a shit infection. That is some... Oh, God, Scottish, hot Scottish mob shit. I, I know, know, right? <laughs> that sounds like another great movie. Shot through the heart, through my asshole. Now, there's a shot. Two weeks later... A shart heart. Paul Ferris was arrested for the murder. Oh, On so he the... died? Oh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was a stupid question But I can't help it That's just me sir I'm glad we got that straight 17's my IQ Two weeks later Paul Ferris was arrested for the murder On the day of Fat Boy's funeral Two of Paul's friends were found dead in the back of a car Killed by gunshots to the head And up the ass Oh a, re- a retaliation Because mm-hmm. now Arthur's like both. Arthur only had two kids right Four. Oh, okay, so we got two left. Got an, yeah. and, and ass for an ass leaves the whole world assless. Am I right? <laughs> ass for to, an para- ass. to paraphrase Gandhi. <laughs> that is so great. That should be on a t-shirt. Oh, dude, ass for The an bodies ass. were conveniently placed along the funeral procession route so the hearse could pass them on the way. Wow. Oh, fuck. This is like an or- orchestrated symbolic mm-hmm. thing. You take two of ours, we'll take two years. Mm. In 1990, new... <laughs> That's not how you say that. That's not how you say that word. Now in, in 1992, we all make no. mistakes. <laughs> I make a lot of them. Paul Ferris went to trial for Fat Boy's murder. The state trotted out over 300 witnesses at the cost of 4.1 million pounds. It was at the time the longest and most enough expensive about Fat Boy's trial. Weight. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag roast culture. This guy's on. You can't get away with that, Slayton. It was at the time the longest, most expensive trial in Scottish history. They even had a star witness, Arthur Thompson. After 54 days, Paul Ferris was found not guilty. Whoa. When a local later offered his condolences on the outcome, Arthur took out his trusted razor and slashed him in the face. Whoa. The Wow. Oh, yeah, he was kind of pet. He was a little upset that the guy his, who... His, his Malky Francis. Yeah, the Malky Francis. Yeah, so, okay. so the local who tried to kick it, kiss his ass, basically, yeah. who was like, I'm on your side, this is fucked up, he, he punished him? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, he tried to palm him, and he got slashed in the there face. There you go. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, that's a lesson to all palmers. God, he, gave, he gave him the old Fung Chow's inner monologue. <laughs> By 19... That's, that's four balls. That's a walk, but you know It's a good walk. Yeah. <laughs> By 1993, Arthur had practically given up. He got sloppy, getting drunk at the same pub at the same time every day. The IRA, having finally got wind of his MI5 deal, ordered a hit. They almost did it, but pulled away at the last minute when they saw he was with his youngest daughter. Aww. But it didn't matter, because on March 13th, 1993... March 13th, 1993... Arthur died of a heart attack. Oh. Wow. How long after the hit got pulled did he die? Like a few days. Wow. What did he eat? What was he eating? Dick. <laughs> Shut the it's fuck. England. It's, it's Scotland. And it's Britain. Oh, they, like, drink, they, they eat dick all the time. Spotted dick. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of just drink and eat like puddings made of meat. The, the culinary motto is fuck a recipe. We have a deep fryer. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, they're all about wow. it. Wow. That was quite a story. Epilogue. Arthur was survived by his wife and two remaining children for a time. Billy, his youngest son was stabbed in 2000, but survived. He ser- then served 18 months in prison for owning a harpoon gun before dying of an overdose in March of 2017. Wow, their family's overdosing. Paul Ferris went to prison in 1997 and on his release in 2002, started a security company. This is the son? 
This is the guy who. Oh, oh Paul. Paul, yeah. This yeah. is the guy who ordered the asshole yeah. shooting of the sun. Oh, Paul wow. started a security company? Mm hmm. He has since published four books about his life of crime. Wow. wow. So he's doing well after all that naughty things he did? Seems like he's doing okay. And there's like a, he, there was a documentary about him, a movie about him. Yeah. I'm going to check out this book. Jeez. Uh, today's sources include The Last Godfather by Reg McKay, who not only wrote this book, but co wrote all of Paul's books. And of course, the evil robots at Wikipedia. Co co wrote. Yeah, I mean, he wrote them. Yeah. And Paul was like, "Hey, so then one time I did this thing." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. To, give me credit. That's not to say this man isn't creative. He did come up with the idea of shooting someone up their asshole into their heart. <laughs> I mean that. I mean, <laughs> shot through the asshole. I mean, I mean, the small intestine wraps all the way around the earth. So imagine how far that had to go. <laughs> That was quite a it was a, it was a 22 too so you think it wouldn't make oh, it all the way to your heart. Yeah. A silenced 22 on top of all that. Get out of here. Wow. Yeah, it's an impre- that's an impressive 22 and that's 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 how I know you're uh, some Dakota knowledge. Mm-hmm. Is you're like a 22, that's like a BB gun. Yeah, oh, no not really. They 20 they used a 22 to kill RFK. Oh yeah. Mhm. Shot him in the head too. So like a 22 it's a small it, bullet but like it's powerful. It's, is it folklore when people say it bounces around in the body or is that true? No, the hollow points do that. Hollow points of mm-hmm. 22 or just any hollow point? Well, any hollow points point. like split okay. apart. Yeah. I've heard people say like about 22, like it's a small, you know, I know a 22 mm-hmm. bullet is a small caliber, yeah. but that because of that size, it bounces around inside the body. I don't know. If I, that's true. I, I wouldn't know, but I would. well, let's conduct a study guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to get a 22 and uh chef's to stand by the wall and let's see what happens. Wow. That's really sadistic of you and stupid. You think I'm going to fall for that you piece of shit? I think you will fall for Joe Dosh's Twitter handle, which is at Joe Dosh at J O E D O S C H. I am here at the comedy store frequently. So you can see him here all the time. Uh, you can also follow our show on all socials at crime pod C R I I I M E P O D three eyes for crime pod. Uh, you can also email the show for, with suggestions, questions, dick pics for Shevsky. Whatever you want. By the way, we've started receiving a lot of really cool listener emails. We're going to be bringing some of those requested topics at you pretty soon. So uh, thank you guys for reaching out. You're super cool. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys, for listening. And and please uh, press the uh, share button on iTunes. Share this thing. Five-star rating review. All that good stuff. Whatever you can do to help us make more ridiculous crimes for you. Thanks for the the five-star review, D405. That's the freeway that I take when I go home. D405. <laughs> uh, That's the username. Maybe give Fuck him a, you, Joe. Maybe give him a four-star review. <laughs> Fuck you, Joe. Bye, robot. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything, guys. We love you. Thank you for doing Thanks, this Thanks, guys. Oh, it was a that was great. great episode. Holy fuck. So that was so much fun. Joe, thank you for putting it Yeah, no problem.